Yeah, that's okay. Then yeah, it's, right. that's a plan condition issue yeah. to work with them. Get it. Then you're okay. All right, everyone, we're going to get started here, and uh, let's all stand for um, the Pledge of the Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sally, if you could help us with the roll call, please. Certainly. Mayor Kent Atwell. Present. Alderperson Tim Eicher. Here. Dave Greenway. Here. Dan Jashinsky. Here. Ed Merrick. Here. Jim Ryer is absent. Laura Schultz. Here. Robert Weiler. Here. And we also have Planner Roger Dupler and Building Inspector Scott Hussinger with us. Thank you. All righty. The first order of business today is a public hearing. Public hearing number one, amended conditional use for DLC 0781.996.013. 2215 Highway 83 Heartland, Brian Becker, Clayworks. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this public hearing number one? Do you want a presentation from the applicant before we do that? We want to do that when he comes up on the agenda or during the public hearing? We'll a brief presentation before we hear public comment. Any other, anybody want to speak to public hearing number one? Seeing none, public hearing number one is closed. Okay, we're going to move on to item one, approved planning commission meeting minutes of April 24th, 2019. Move to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes? All right, item number two, city of Delafield citizens' comments pertaining to subjects on the consent agenda. Any comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none, comments on the consent agenda are closed. We have a motion on the consent agenda. Or anybody want to pull something off? A motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Extensions? Noes? Passes. Okay, anybody that's here for item 3A through 3H? You're approved and free to go. If you don't have an agenda, I encourage you to get one from the hallway there and make sure, because you don't want to sit here all night when you don't need to. <laughs> those, those items are Bliss Boutique, Lake Country Cigars, Creating Balance, Next Door Boutique, 360 Fitness, Target, Waterford Wine and Spirits, and the Delafield Promotion and Tourism Visitor Center. All right, thank you all for coming. All right, number four, City of Delfield citizens' comments pertaining to items on or off the agenda. For This is for any topic you'd like to speak about. Come on up. Question? Why'd you let those guys build such a big building next to me? Okay. Wait. So, oh, we gotta walk up there to ask no, you, you sit down. Yeah, so the way it works is oh. it's citizens' comments, and it's a one-way conversation, right? The citizen comes up gives us their comments, we don't discuss anything, we just listen. Sorry, I was not familiar with your Yeah, no worries. And um, so that's the process we're going to go through. So if you'd like to come up and make some comments. So it's not a Q&A. It's not a Q&A. That's unfortunate. It's a, it's a listening process, okay. right? OK. Cool. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Commission. My name is Bill Restock, and I live at 4527 Bettelson Road. Um, as of yesterday, I've lived there 30 years. And um, my property shares a lot line with the Village Square development. Um, I was very active in the land use decisions for that property since, uh, since the 1990s. And I'm here tonight to very briefly speak about agenda item number 6A. I am not in favor of the proposed uh, vape shop. Not only am I not opposed to it, uh, not, I'm sorry, not only am I opposed to it in Village Square, I'm opposed to it in the entire city of Delafield. Um, when, when the Village Square Shopping Center was being presented to the city, um, it was sold to the citizens and the city as the gateway to Delafield. It was to be a quality development and it was supposed to be the pride of our neighborhood. The, villi the, the Village Square Shopping Center has to this point been a nice shopping center, and, and it could be, I suppose, the pride of the neighborhood. 
Um, there were years and years of debate about what tenants should be allowed um, to create the right retail climate at Village Square. And the city of Delfield scrutinized every application to make sure that the business was right for the retail climate and right for the neighborhood. I'm going to give you three or four quick reasons why I believe the vape shop, I'm calling it the vape shop, the vape shop is not a good fit uh, for Village Square. Number one, it's not a good fit for a residential neighborhood. Number two, um, the American Heart Association said that in, in 2018, the number of teenagers vaping has increased 78% in one year. That was 2018. So my point is there are four schools within, I didn't measure it, but a mile or two, certainly less than two miles. You have Lake Country Lutheran, Divine Redeemer, Lake Country, and University Lake School are all within a mile to a mile or two from Village Square, and a vape shop would not be a good mix with schools around. Third, it would attract a different demographic than the shopping center would, was designed to attract, and that would be mainly families shopping for food, going to Papa Murphy's for pizza, whatever. Um, the other concern I would have, and this might be addressed by you folks tonight, um, is the use of the product on the premises. When you, like, when you go to pick and save to buy a pizza and laundry detergent, you don't cook your pizza out in the parking lot, and you don't do your wash out in the parking lot. I'm, I'm suspecting if I were to be buying uh, vape products, that area could become an area where people uh, conjugate to use the product, and that would be a huge concern of mine as a neighbor. The fifth one is more of, a, of something I'm paranoid about, um, and, and, and you might address this with the potential business people tonight, but would there be um, paraphernalia sold there? And what I mean is like paraphernalia for the use of marijuana, for example. Because a vape shop, while it has nothing to do with marijuana, it's still that same type of store, and I would be nervous. Um, I would hope you, if you're considering this tonight, I would hope someone would ask that question. So in conclusion, we all know uh, that in a retail environment, there are certain indicator businesses. And you hope that your downtown or your shopping center has stores that uh, people coming into your neighborhood will immediately appreciate as a good store. And I think of stores like, and this is certainly not an exhaustive list, like Kohl's, Panera, Quick Trip gas stations, Bath and Body Works. Um, but there are also, if we're being honest with ourselves, there are certain stores where if you drive into a town maybe you've never been to before, there are certain stores that do indicate a less than positive shopping atmosphere. And, um, uh, and I, I'm just going to say a few, something like an adult toy store, a check cashing business, a tattoo parlor, and a vape shop. So um, the last thing I want you to think about is this is being proposed at Village Square, which is miles from here. If this same store was being proposed for downtown Delafield, how would you feel about that? Beautiful downtown, historic Delafield getting a vape shop, how would you feel about that? Because that's the way I feel about it coming into my neighborhood. I don't think it's a good mix, and I hope you guys ask a lot of hard questions tonight, and I hope you deny the business plan. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Any other citizen comments on anything on or off the agenda tonight? Any other citizens' comments? Seeing none, citizens' comments are now closed. And we'll move into item 5A, DELC 0793.049-408 Main Street, Delafield owner applicant, John Tomasini. Tomasini. Applicant seeks approval of certified survey map to consolidate four historical substandard Lots into one parcel conforming to the CBD2 district and facilitate development of an approved four unit multifamily dwelling and recommend to the Common Council of the same. Do we have an applicant here for this topic? Come on up. Who should go first, Roger? Um, John is up here. He's going to give you a presentation on two factors. The first of which being uh, what's on the Planning Commission agenda for the CSM review. CSM has been to 
uh, review by the city engineer. Uh, it's found to be uh, approvable as is. In fact, as they submitted it twice already and have conformed with all the recommendations. I would encourage you to consider approving uh, this uh, as submitted and recommend it to council. The second item we'll get into after your first uh, point of action. So quick question on the first one. Anything about the second point of action that would have any impact? Have any, any impact? I mean, would we, would no. we need to undo anything to, okay. No. I'll make a motion to approve the CSM as presented. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. And I'm assuming that motion was to and, recommend to the Absolutely, council. yes. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. The second item, uh, I would encourage you to, to ask any questions, uh, share any of your concerns with the applicant. Um, it's been determined by Mr. Tomasini, the owner, and Mr. Coots has uh, complied with his direction to downsize the building that has already been approved. Just uh, two months ago, we had a, a final approval for the site plan, architecture, landscaping, engineering, the whole shebang. This CSM this evening was the last step prior to council approval. They could get a building permit in, you know, as soon as council approves it. Unfortunately, now they want to downsize the building. John, you can give them any information in that regard. My only comment uh, here is that um, as a change to, the comp to a conditional use, this is a preliminary presentation. We got to go through a public hearing again to modify the site plan. So, um, go ahead. Sure. Thank you, Roger. Um, as Roger mentioned, uh, we have been through a couple of meetings with the Plan Commission here in regards to the original proposal, which was roughly 16,000 square feet in total square footage. Um, there are uh, some market comps being done by the owner, as well as a study of what uh, he felt would be the most, uh, obviously, um, you know, manageable type of property to sell, and the decision was made that these needed to be downsized slightly. Uh, based on other units in the area that are struggling to sell. Um, and so we did come back with a revised plan where uh, we kept the architectural intent. We merely shrunk everything down to a square footage of 12,000 square feet overall. So essentially these went from 4,000 square foot units to 3,000 square foot units, still very nicely sized. Uh, the footprint on the site did shrink overall. It actually added some green space to the site. Uh, which was another comment uh, back from a few of the um, brokers that uh, Mr. Tomasini is working with. And uh, then I mentioned, you know, with Roger, uh, what would be the next steps? We obviously aren't making it bigger, we're making it smaller. Uh, and we are maintaining all of the architectural proportions. Um, but because it is a conditional use, uh, granted, we do need to go back through the process of uh, updating the plan commission and having a public hearing. So that's what we're here with uh, tonight. We've provided updated renderings. Uh, again, uh, we kept all the proportions the same. We did not change anything uh, substantial on that other than uh, literally shrunk the building from all, all four sides. Um, so, so these, what's in our packet, and Roger's showing up there, is your new proposal? Uh, the one that is shown right now is the uh, new proposal, yes. That, that's what's submitted. I just wanted to make sure that's what's the correct one. That was yeah, the, are the floor plans essentially the same? They are. They're just smaller. Okay. Uh, garage I, I, it looked like it was in here twice. I mean, that's really kind I, of... I know. I mean, I'm, I'm hard, having a hard time distinguishing old from... Well, that new. was the point. We didn't want to take away from the architectural <laughs> intent uh, at all, uh, but we did need to shrink the square footage of, of it you know, from a cost standpoint. And it did actually end up adding quite a bit of green space back to the site as well, which we thought was a plus. Um, the height of the building previously was 34 feet. Uh, we're down to like 28 feet now. So, you know, it's not as imposing as you come into town. Um, so, uh, but it is a little smaller. <laughs> so just uh, a matter of, a matter of um, operations here. As a conditional use, uh, the, the applicant could not come in and ask for a larger building without conducting another public hearing and going through the entire process. Since they've been approved for a certain amount of square footage already and now they are reducing that, uh, our next step to conduct a public hearing will only be to amend the conditional use to incorporate the new site plan and new architecture. It's not a deliberation of any of the you know, site ratios or anything like that because obviously it was approved once and they are fully compliant with those approvals. Is it, was there any, I'm, I'm betting there was, but as far as shrinking the footprint, 
I mean, whatever optimizes your drainage and ability to landscape and, you know, appropriately, I'm, I'm assuming you looked at those types of options or, you know, if, if not, I mean, you've got time to do that. I'd, I think maybe you'd want to talk to see where best spot for trees or what, however you want to manage that stuff. That Correct. Yeah, as part of our, of our final submittal, I mean, yeah. we did have a landscape plan that was submitted and we'll, we'll submit a revised landscape plan, of course. Um, and then it, it does actually help with site drainage, just being a slightly yeah. smaller footprint. Um, everything was designed to site drain to the city stormwater swale. And so uh, this obviously allows for additional green space to uh, better facilitate that. We didn't change any of the curb cuts uh, entrances that had already been reviewed by Department of Public Works. Right. Sounds good to me. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Still yeah, that's good. good. I, like I just want to make sure the architectural changes and things that you worked with us on remain in the new mm -hmm. version, right? That's Absolutely. Yeah, I, none of the materials have changed uh, at all. And again, it was just a, a, a squishing <laughs> of, the, of the proposed design. Same amount of Do we need a motion for a public hearing, or you just schedule it, right? No, yeah. it's just scheduled. The purpose okay. of this was for you to share any comments uh, for which the applicant would have the ability. They've already submitted uh, paperwork in the application oh. for the conditional use Great. public hearing. If you had any comments, they would be afforded an opportunity to augment their submittal with changes if you wish requested any. Nope. Okay. okay. Any other questions for that? It's applicant? a rare occurrence. I know. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. for so sure. we're okay with it. Yeah. For sure. I think it looks there was great. a lot of work done with the owner and a few of his brokers. There that are some other sense. condos in the area going up right now that are, are not attracting buyers, and so he didn't want to be stuck in that same situation. Thank you. So. No, that's <laughs> that great. Yeah. We have other people that want to go bigger, right? And we just uh, don't see people coming and wanting to go smaller. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next month, right? Yep. yep. Thank correct. you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to 5C, DELC 0751.110 and DELC 0751.097906 Scenic Heights Drive, Delafield Owner, Applicant Michael and Audrey Pals. Applicant seeks approval of a certified survey map, stormwater maintenance agreement and easement and recommended to the Common Council of the same. Come on up, gentlemen. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michael Pals. <coughs> Hello, I'm Tom Langan. I'm with Badger Home Builders. I designed the house. What's going on in this lot? You want to downsize? We did downsize. <laughs> <the lot. laughs> the Pal CSM was on the agenda last last month, and uh, we discussed it briefly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the petitioners were not here, uh, and I know that there was a question. I don't remember who raised it in regards to the lot width versus building width. Um, but the, the application, the petition has not changed since last month. Uh, they've therefore been put on this agenda uh, for, to continue our, our conversation. Um, if you need a refresher as to what's going on here, uh, they actually own two lots. The two lots are split. In, the northern lot is one zoning district. The southern lot is a different zoning district. Uh, spanning the property line and imposing restrictions on both of those two lots is a detention basin, uh, a detention basin that predates any of our required um, stormwater management agreements and it's, you know, 1980s technology in regards to stormwater maintenance and uh, calculations. They have worked with the city engineer to modify those appropriately uh, and part of the CSM that they're asking for now to widen the southern lot also incorporates changes to the easement uh, for the drainage basin. Uh, and also, um, by consideration and approval of this, this CSM, it will also uh, engage the approval of a st new stormwater management agreement, which we don't have because of the age of this uh, basin. So uh, the end game here, allowing the PALs to um, increase the width of their southern lot, decrease the width of their northern lot, and modify the stormwater basin very slightly, is actually in the city's better interest because of the improvements of the stormwater management and the potential uh, maintenance agreement. What is between the two lots? Is it, there's one dwelling on it currently, or is there two? Is there two there's houses? There's a dwelling on, on the north lot, which is the one okay. we own. Uh, right. We're living in. All right. So they're basically moving in their backyard. Gotcha. Into a smaller house. Into a ranch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the theme now. And then they're yeah. selling the one that's too big. Yeah. That's, that's what keeps me busy. <laughs> I know, Tim, you had some questions on what we were going to build on that uh, in the last meeting. I, I think, so yeah, maybe my, my concern was really um, however you can manage your setback with your neighbors to the south to optimize, just yeah, be a good neighbor. I mean, you're, you're going to respect, you obviously have to respect the, the setbacks, whatever you can do. In, it in the design, helpful. I did, there's a little jog in it where the uh, master bath is, and that was uh, to accommodate where the neighbors lot deck is about two feet over the lot line. So we'd have a little more room to grade and not disturb their deck. Okay, and I'm assuming, I mean, whatever, runoff and engineering, this is gonna solve other problems, probably. It, yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, it, I, have no, it, it, I have no issue with it. I just wanted to voice that as something that, I mean, I can appreciate the fact you don't have a neighbor forever. Now someone's building a new house. It happens all over the city. It's the same but, neighbor they've had for years. So I know. <laughs> no, I get it. I, I, I get it. You just get a little closer. <laughs> yeah. So it's it is a little bit difficult to read. If you can see my cursor on the screen, what uh, Tom is talking about here, where you can see the label deck, that's the neighbor's deck that actually encroaches on the property line. You can see there's a graded swale there, um, but they've also put incorporated a jog in their in their foundation so as to maintain a reasonable distance from that encroaching deck. You know, the back corner of the house is actually 12 and a half feet from the lot line, which I think the setbacks are eight. Yep. Yeah, it's tight. Anyway, I'm, I'm good. I, so I'll make a motion to approve the CSM and recommend the council the same. And, and along with this stormwater maintenance agreement and contingent upon the engineer, is there notes from the engineer? Um, there's, there's not. Oh. Surveyor's review letter. Yeah. Surveyor's review Surveyor's letter. Review. So contingent you got the motion, upon Sally, or you want to? <coughs> contingent uh, upon reconciliation of the surveyor's review well, letter. Well, I have Roger's recommendation, which was approval contingent upon resolution of the items identified in the surveyor's review letter dated April 16, 2019, um, and recommend to the Common Council the same contingent upon Public Works Committee action to approve the stormwater maintenance agreement, the easement, and engineering documents. All of that. Okay. Yes. And? Recommend. It wasn't there. Recommended council. I wasn't was heard what you said. Okay. Oh, that's okay. All right. Is there a second? Okay. They have seconds. All right. What color? What Any color further discussion? Are you moving in a lot too? Then is that yes? Yours? Okay. We'll be losing, well, living on the south one. Okay. What color are you going to make the house? I'm sorry. What color? <laughs> what color is the house? Yeah. Pink. Um, it's going to be a, a grayish brown. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank Abstentions. you. Abstentions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we are on to 6A DELC 0733.998.002-3067 Village Square Drive, Heartland, owner Delafield Station LLC, applicant Stephen. Stephanie Lemke, applicant oh. seats approval of business plan of operation for vape juices and CBD LLC, a specialty retail store. The hours of operation are 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. all days with one full-time employee and three part-time employees. Oh, the applicant's already up here. Great. Um, okay. If you could give us your name and a... Oh, it's Stephanie Lemke. I want to say it and, is and not your address. My address. Huh? Your address. Three zero six seven Village Square Drive. Okay. Um, I don't know, Delafield. And can you speak into the microphone, please? Okay, Stephanie Lemke, three zero six seven Village Square Drive. Beautiful. Thank you. Sure. I want to say it's not a vape shop. Okay. I'm not um, selling to kids. I have a do not you know come, and if you're below eighteen. Um, there's only about 15% of vape products. It's mostly a CBD store. And um, I'm selling all of CBD and health and beauty products. I'm selling um, bath salts and I'm selling essential oils. I'm also selling um, body scrubs, face masks. And the only reason why there is any vape in it at all is because some CBD has vape cartridges that you use a battery to and it's to be able to to get the cbd just um into your system easier 
Um, so that is why it says vape. There is um, no paraphernalia or anything like that. I am not a head shop. I am a health and beauty um, boutique more so that I'm trying to sell, you know, all kinds of products that I feel would work out well in this area. Um, I, I'm not selling, you know, big, any kind of um, like big vape stuff or anything. There is some juices and everything that are have CBD and stuff in them. And that is the only reason. Um, I realize now that maybe the name is a little bit off-putting and um, I could change the name, but um, I'm actually putting just the name VJC up instead of the whole, um, v, you know, and then when next month, if I got approved, you would see that on my sign. It's just going to say VJC. It's not going to have the whole, you know, vapes, juices, and um, CBD. But for the most part, my business is CBD. It is not vapes. And I even have, I've already bought a sticker that says, if you are under 18, show me your ID. So, you know, because even CBD, I would not sell to anybody who is under 18. I don't believe in it. I'm 49 years old. I have grandchildren. I have children. And I would not allow any of those things to be sold to my children. So, therefore, I would never sell them to anybody else's children. So... I know um, I didn't know what it meant until somebody else looked it up, but can you help us understand what CBD is? Sure. CBD is, and I mean, because it's not fully like FDA approved, but there's been a lot of studies that CBD is a product, although it's made from the hemp plants, but there is no THC, so it's not any kind of marijuana at all, but it is made from um, hemp flour, and it is, it's used on pets and people and um, you know even children for a lot of medical reasons um, it helps with anxiety it helps with um, so, like children that are hyper it helps a lot with aches and pains um, it helps pets you know with their joints and that kind of thing so I mean the type of um, items that are being sold are all like remedy type of things. I mean, there's like called tinctures where they put it under, you know, their um, tongue and that will help them with like the aches and pains and their body joints, you know, um, any kind of joint pain. Um, there's, it's, it's stuff to help you sleep, melatonin. So there's like gummies that have melatonin in them. All it is is vitamins. There's, you know, melatonin and it is a vitamin. You can buy it at Walgreens. So it's, um, the pain cream is icy hot with some CBD in it for a little bit enhanced effect. So that, you know, I mean, I, I've sold it to an eight, you know, 80 year old people. You know, I was talking to somebody here and she was asking me about it for her pet. I, you know, I, um, I met a, a bunch of different people that are older and they've been buying it for their pets and everything else. So my shop is mostly going to be health and beauty, body essential, you know, like essential oils and salts and, you know what I mean? The vape part is like 10% of it. And it's only because some CBD stuff has vape qualities in it. There will be nothing that somebody could use for marijuana. There will be nothing that anybody could use, you know, and I guarantee there would never be anybody under 18 buying anything. Just because even at CBD, even though it's not regulated yet, I don't believe it as, you know, a 40-year-old grandmother, I would never sell it to anybody like that. So. Great, that's helpful. Thank you for sharing that with us. So, Roger, you made a note in your, in the, in the recommendation letter stating that we don't have this isn't included in a list of approved retail establishments in the zoning district we'd have to extend the belief that this is similar to a tobacco shop absolutely if, if your concern is, is about the the vaping products they are a legal product um, it's just that our zoning code does not specifically identify them uh, identify vaping products it, we do have the clause that reads, other permitted uses may be allowed if determined by the Planning Commission to be substantially similar 
to the above and subject to the approval of the Common Council. My recommendation to you would be consider this no different than a tobacco shop in regards to the vape, in regards to the juices and the CBD oils. Those are organic products and they are, you know, there's they are is somewhat uh, more like our herbal remedies rather than any medicinal uses. I would suggest to you that this is something as a use, um, maybe considered a permitted use, but it requires your consideration and action to declare it similar to a tobacco shop and recommend it to the council accordingly. Well, I, well, I've, so I've got a litany of issues with this. Um, some of it is mentioning the tobacco similarity and she's downplaying the actual smoking part of this um, is one piece of it. Um, the other one is, um, which was brought up in the past uh, or by Mr. Rustock and that's um, just the proximity to, to, to schools and, and things like vape and CBD um, use, that trends to a younger demographic. I mean, I know there's, uh, you mentioned grandmas and pets in that, but uh, you're talking about medicinal purposes and we're, we're also talking about a, a substance that um, by virtue of the Farming Act in 2018 and then the State Act by Senator Teston in 2017, um, these are these are brand new applications that are thrust you know that are out there for us to, to consider, and um, uh, even the state's own hemp legislation is in a pilot program. Mm -hmm. um, and when we visited uh, this about eight years ago or seven years ago, when there was a significant issue with um, the selling and consumption of bath salts at regional establishment, like I don't know if it was Stop and Go was no longer there, um, and what you know, that, that was a mask for synthetic cannabinoids that were being sold and smoked. Um, that we, were, we were investigating legislation to keep those from being legal in the city. And our police chief... Bath salts? Yes. Yeah. They're they sold were. under names like Space Jam and Bazooka. It's just weird mm. stuff. But, um, mm. but you smoke them because there's, it's an evasive market that's coming from Asia where they just, they tinker with particular... Um, uh, features of the organic molecule to make it, well, this one's not illegal yet. Mm -hmm. And they, so our, our police chief said he didn't have the, the, the mechanism or the manpower or the money to monitor what was legal and what wasn't legal um, uh, at the time. And I don't see this as being something like ex um, encouraging use of things that make you feel different and substances that um, even the, uh, Senator, Te well, substances that are that are new to the market, and our police chief doesn't necessarily have a handle on how to monitor, you know, what is legal and what isn't. Um, a, a different section of it is is the legislation that you know I, I reached out to Senator Teston's office and talked to her, the his director of uh, constituent relations, because he was quoted just last week saying that he's investigating. Um, whether or not retailers should be licensed to prove that their establishments are legal so that they can do business with banks. And so there's a lot of unknowns with this and uh, that being a primary um, use of the, of the business, I don't think we're equipped to, to manage this right now. Um, and and I, I don't think it's ignorance on our part. I think it's the fact that this is, that this is a new venture and it's used to alter people. It, it's used like medicine and you know, you, you yourself said it's not regulated. The state wants to, is talking about adding something to regulate it. Um, our, our Waukesha County, I, I, I sent a note to Linda Wickman, the public communications coordinator there. And she says, I think there was a note in here saying the county regulates vaping shops in, in this product. And she said they do not. And, and the product you're referring to is a CBD, the CBD oil? CBD oils. Um, so she said the county does not regulate vaping shops. Or CBD does oil not. does not, or public health or environmental health departments right. there do not. We're we be flying alone on this, and I. I, I well, I, I I mean I I don't. How do we know that? I'm mean, just being devil's advocate, right? I mean, there's vape shops all over Lake Country area and the surrounding community. But, so I'm suggesting I'm suggesting comment. that that tobacco use is older than the country, mm -hmm. and this is less than six months old. And we're being asked to equivocate the two, and I can't. I mean, I say that they're not anything alike. There's a there's a long history and tradition. All the evils and 
sicknesses that come associated with tobacco use? We, I'm not we, we know. Any type of tobacco at all. I get that, but we're trying, so in order to extend oh. the, a business plan of operation for something, the business you're describing, it was suggested that one way we could do it would be to make it e considered equivocal to, or equivalent to a tobacco shop, and it's not. I didn't say that he did. I know. So without that, I, I mean, I don't see a, I don't see a valid use and, that I we mean, can translate this, this particular. This, the bath salts you were talking about, I'm using like um, salt soothers, which is um, a dead sea salt. So I don't really know how anybody could smoke d uh, dead sea salt, but I mean, they're like fancy, you know, salt that you know, comes from the sea that, you know, people use in their bath. And I'm I not that. I do understand that's different than what I was referring to. Stephanie, do you have an existing an existing storefront somewhere, or is this a new startup? It's a new... St I've been in business for myself for over 17 years. I do... Um, I worked for mortgage companies doing inspections on houses. And um, I also have owned a restaurant previously in Brown Deer. So I've been an entrepreneur, and um, this is something that I really believe in, in the product, and that's what made me decide that I wanted to um, have it. And I mean, like I said, it, it's not just, you know, vapes or CBD. I mean, it's essential oils, which is a very popular thing. And you know what I mean? It's the, the body scrubs and face masks, and I, I was considering myself more of a health and beauty. Then I was considering myself a vape shop because, like I said, I'm not selling a lot of vape equipment or juices or anything like that. My son picked the name, and now I realize it was kind of, you know, maybe not the right idea. But, um, you know, a lot of the CBD and stuff does have, you know, cartridges and stuff like that where you use some of the, the vape equipment with. And that is the reason why. And I'm not saying that I won't sell any, but it's such a small percentage of my business. And, you know, I mean, I, I wanted to, you know, there's CBD stores popping up everywhere now. I, I, I mean, just, they're everywhere. So would you be willing to do this without the vape aspect? I would. And the, So I'm uncomfortable with the CBD portion of it for now. Um, for, for the reasons I cited, and that is that there's all sorts of re regulations and legislation that's pending. Right, um, and if if that does get regulated, then I would be obviously have to be doing whatever the state or county regulates. So you know, what I mean, I and I'm willing to do whatever. I'm not like just right, a fly by night type of okay. person. So with with that, so with that consideration, just so let me, I'll just finish my my train of thought. Um, uh, to citizens comment earlier, um, this particular development was. It, to say it was heavily scrutinized is an understatement. Um, there was a there was litigation involved. There was a settlement agreement. All the factors of it being in a residential neighborhood and and um, talking about specific uses. I mean, we defined a category for the type of restaurant that's allowed there based on whether or not it's served in a plastic wrapper or not, or whether or not you use plastic food utensils. And we're being asked to consider a use where there's undefined regular regulatory controls on it and you're suggesting that you'll just go with the flow and that we'd be the last we I mean we're the city is going to be the only safety gap between what we don't know and what's coming and I'm just not comfortable with that I mean I mean with that I'm gonna make a recommendation to deny this business plan of operation second Uh, I'm just going to share a couple things I, I looked up, and you know, it sounds like this is different than a vape shop. But uh, there were uh, vape shops in Pewaukee, Waukesha, Brookfield, Mequon, Menominee Falls, Germantown, um, and then vape products are sold um, in the city of Delaville already. Uh, they're sold at the cigar shop, Lake Country Cigar. They're sold sold at Quick Trip, and uh, 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 most grocery stores, including Walmart have these products you buy them right off the shelf right so i just want to share that with you right i really don't have a, a, a horse in this race but you know um those types of products um already exist and are already sold in the city of delfield uh, i'm unknowledgeable about the cbd oil myself um i i, I believe it has nothing to do with marijuana I, I believe there probably could be municipal value to it 
Um, but I, I have no idea, right? There's health and beauty stores, the, the vitamin place that we have over by Century. And for all we know, they're selling some version of this in there already, and we don't Can even know one, it. One more thing, sorry to interrupt you. Yep. Um, gas stations are now selling CBD, including yep. Yep. It's discussion. And Walmart is selling CBD. Yep. So you are already selling CBD in Delafield. I would, yeah. okay, I would so recommend. Just, just to clarify, we're, we're, a motion's been made, so now it's oh, just between us. Yep, yep. Just I would up. recommend uh, returning with a different name and a different business plan without that vaping aspect. Um, Roger, you mentioned, or Tim, that this is not on the list that we had for Correct. it. To add that to the list, would that require a public hearing, or is that even possible? It would. It would be a. It would be a text amendment to the ordinance. Uh, it's something that we should do uh, from an objective standpoint, but certainly not something that is prompted by a petitioner when it comes to modifying the ordinance. Uh, if if you want to make some agreement with the petitioner at this time, um, let let's let that be different. Uh, different motion than any action to modify the ordinance just i take seriously our public hearings and comments from citizens and we we only had one tonight but that was a strong uh, no and i think that if we're going to allow this it should probably have a public hearing and go through that process of, or you come in with a change uh, for something that fits the categories that we allow in that shopping center Anywhere in the city of Delafield, right? There's nothing unique well, to that shopping center. I thought we had a, no drive-through food. Yeah, we no didn't allow drive-through right. food. There's, I thought there was a list a, attached to that development. Settlement agreement is of what we doesn't get specific about what. I think it says you what you can't, can't have, but right. doesn't speak to what you can I'm, have. I'm we positive it didn't contemplate the, CBD oil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we, but we go to other parts of the ordinance to say what's allowed in those only those districts. All right. Additional discussion. Yeah. I met someone this weekend who actually did the CBD oil for a back problem. And I said, well, did it work? And she said, well, it doesn't eliminate the, the problem physically, but it does have a calming effect on the body. And I thought, well, you know, sometimes. And the CBD oil has been around for quite a while now. And there's like, I, I am a little skittish because we don't know a whole lot about it. It's not regulated yet by the FDA, which I'm always kind of, but um, I'm, I'm kind of open to it. Yep. Yeah, I, like, like others around here, I wasn't sure what, I, I've heard of it, so I did probably more research in the last 24 hours than I've ever done in my life or you know, willingly want to look it up. Um, but it is not a very well regulated because it is new. Yeah. Uh, it says here, Department of Agricultural Trade, Consumer Protection. All they're doing is saying, these are sources that CBD oil can be purchased from. That's the extent of it. They want to make sure that the level of THC that's found in it is 0.03% or less. So uh, to say it's free of THC, which is a marijuana uh, byproduct of it, uh, that's found heavily in that. Um, that is a possibility, uh, but it is not, that's the only level of regulation that's there. It's not regulated by the county, it's not regulated by the state right now. It's just by that agency. Uh, so as far as, you know, medicinal purposes, there's, there's no uh, definitive studies that have confirmed any of this, uh, because it is new. It's new out on the market. Uh, you know, Wisconsin was a number one hemp producer up until 1958, I believe it was, you know, until it was uh, you know, banned. So it's a, it is a new product. There's not much research out there to find if it's good or bad for people. Um, but to, to say that it's it's you know something people are going to get high from or anything like that, it's it's, it's controversial right now. Uh, THC or um, I'm sorry, CBD can be found in marijuana and in hemp as it as itself. You know, not to say that they're going to be putting marijuana byproducts in there, but that's the association I think that the general public has with this product right now. And it's only because it's new. I know it's not cheap. It's not cheap. Yeah. No. And just so you know, um, all the products that I have have 0 .01 or less. I've made sure of that because I didn't want to do anything illegal. <laughs> so every place that I've bought from has either 0 or 0 0.1 or less. So I don't even go up to 0 0.03. 
because I don't believe in marijuana, so I, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't do any of that kind of stuff, so. All right, we have a motion. Any other discussion? Question on the motion. Sally, is that also a recommendation of council? Um, it was yes. to be, yes. All right, seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion to deny the applicant's petition, say aye. 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 Raise, we'll your, deny, raise your hand. Aye. I'm an aye. Raise your hand if you said aye. Okay. All opposed? So it becomes a tie. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> that means I have to vote. I do. Wait a second. I, I'm sorry. I had three ayes and four opposed. Is that oh. correct? Did I There's miscount? only six of us. There's only six of us. Yeah. That would be hard then. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Let's go to the video. <laughs> All right. Oops. So... Well, I get to be in the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. It goes to council anyway. Yeah. So you get to vote again. Well, but it, but if I vote to deny it, it, it still goes to council, right? It goes to yeah. council regardless. Okay. So I'm going to vote in favor of the motion to deny it, but I would change my vote if you change the name, as was suggested by the by the uh, is by there the commissioner for you to approve it with the thing that I would change it no I, I want I want you to come in with the with the new application and and um, tell tell us exactly what it's going to be called right okay I just ask because I spend a lot of money <laughs> ready to go so I mean I, I guess my question is if I change the name what I get approved. I mean, well, you, you yeah. go back through the process. It was a very close vote. If you change the name, there might be more people at the planning commission level willing to vote for it. But you still have to go to either way. You still have to go to the council. And there, you, you, you have seven more people that will vote as well. And they may so you know, vote against it. It's not just here? It's not no. just here. This is the planning commission. Yeah. And based on our recommendation, that automatically goes to council. They can overrule the planning commission. So you have another mm -hmm. kick at the cat on this motion as as your submittal now. Okay. When is that? When is the next council meeting? First Monday. I believe if you only have one in June. It's June twentieth or something. Oh look, just one moment. Do I did I have to apply for that? Nope. The third or the seventeenth. <clears throat> is it the seventeenth? June 17th would be the next regularly scheduled council meeting. So you will be on that agenda okay. with a re recommendation from the council, uh, from the planning commission to deny. But the council could vote yes. to uphold could the I ruling or they could change it. Could I change my name before then? You could submit that and present that to the, uh, correct Roger? If that's just an augmentation of yeah. the application? You could present the new name um, at the council level. And then they could approve it? They could approve it. Okay. Anybody disagree with my summation? Make sure no. I'm being accurate? It's good. Okay. Alrighty. So, I'm sorry. I, no I, worries. I, just, I don't understand a little bit. So, when I, before their meeting or it's by a certain date. Get with Roger know? and tell him okay. what your new name's going to be. Okay. And he will provi provide that information. Uh, and it will get in the packet that goes out to the city council, and we meet on June 17th? 17th. 17th. So you'll want to mark your calendar to be here on June 17th. Got it. And then in the meantime, because then do I need to have another um, application to meet you guys again? No. At the no. End of okay. No, it just, you've already filed the application that includes that process. Recommendation of the plan commission to the council. It's all included. Right, but you said that you wanted me to come in front of you again with a new name. If you, if, if we you, can do it in between, it might save you the step. Yeah. If you want to augment okay. your petition at this time, given what the plan commission has shared with you this evening, we can do that in preparation for the council meeting. I would be happy to do that. Give me a call tomorrow. I will. All right. Thank you. Thank at you. At least for the name, I think Stephanie is just fine for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Very Great. Much. Thank you. All right, 6B DELC 0781.996.013-2215, Highway 83, Heartland, owner applicant, Brian Becker. 
Applicant seeks approval and amended conditional use permit and site plan for clay works to expand the home business with the addition of an accessory building and recommend to council of the same. Floor is yours, unless right. you... Do you want to start or shall I? Sure. All right. Um, since I moved into that location, uh, I've operated in a dairy barn, a 1928 dairy barn. And fast forward 21 years, um, I've grown the business. And I've grown it with uh, kind of a different marketing plan, which de-emphasizes retail and emphasizes wholesale. I sell to stores all over the country. I have a huge online retail business now. Uh, not huge, but uh, took the place of the brick and mortar retail business. We're still open to the public. We still have a showroom where you can order pottery. Um, but what plagues me now is I'm kind of cramped in my original 1928 dairy barn. I'm cramped because you know we have fixtures, we have um, pottery wheels, we used to have pottery classes, we don't have those anymore. Um, we have trade show displays. All that is taking up square footage in the dairy barn. And <laughs> I could probably, if that were out, um, have another at least 1,000 square feet of growing room for workshop and um, just just other uh, lines of operation to expand our product line. So the ancillary building would definitely help us with respect to overflow of inventory, with respect to all of our packing materials that we have to buy in huge bulk. It would be closer in, in proximity to having deliveries pick up at that spot with a garage door and so forth. Um, the business has also crept into my personal residence in the basement. I could get all that out and in that storage loft. So uh, also, since the business was in the barn, I have no storage for vehicles of any kind. It's just boats, I have a work truck, I have a work trailer. Um, there's, there's basically the combination of personal assets and then business related assets but the storage is all going to be primarily for the expansion and, and having that extra inventory and just storing all the stuff related to the business so that I can have more workspace in the existing building can I clarify anything for you? Have, you, have you looked at a storage space you know, for, you mentioned. I'm assuming your your uh, like display, mm -hmm. your displays for trade shows and stuff, sure. or stuff that's static that you use intermittently. Intermittently. Um, have you looked at? Yep. I mean, have you looked at places? Because I mean, you mentioned boats and vehicles, and if I'm usually in people in or situations where they need a spot to store their boat, they go oh. store it, mm -hmm. right? And and other stuff too that you're not using right. frequently. Um, right. If you could free up the space. Um, I think that I could spend all kinds of money sending everything nowhere near my home. That's kind of why I want to. No, up I get it. I, I'm, I think it's great that I mean your business is, is good in that. But um, you know, we in, in our consent agenda we had a, a home business that we that we just approved, and mm -hmm. um, you know if she ends up with four or five employees, she's gonna be out of her home, and I, I don't know if she want, would want to build. An ancillary building to house her patients coming in to see her or not with the extra employees. I'm, <clears throat> I'm just wondering what other solutions there might be, as far as storage. Because you're um, you're basically asking us to build a building that's not allowed, right? That that's basically what you're doing, and so, okay. you know, we're you, that's a it's a it's a really big ask based on the underlying zoning. You know, the building inspector, if you ask him, would come and would tell you no. Mm -hmm. You're coming to us asking for an exception. Um, so, without an overbearing reason as to why you can't possibly do this some other way, it's r extremely difficult for us oh. to vote to approve that. Okay, um, I have the choice of storing all of these goods right. off premises, but then how how do you when you need to pack, use packing peanuts, and they're in a building 10 minutes away, 
boxes that we use daily. I mean, the logistics of just constantly moving all over the place, um, it seems that it would be a lot more difficult than having a spot right on my property. I mean, it, I don't know if you'd do the same thing. <laughs> and I'm not sure um, this is exactly, I'm telling you exactly why I would need it. And um, it's hard to grow with Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, when you submitted the drawings to us, I mean, you, you, you said the new building would store a boat, right? And yet you're telling okay. us you don't have enough room for your business. So I, it's just... If, it, if I'm it does, going, it just rings difficult for me okay, personally. If, if I'm going to the trouble of building something, um, wouldn't I want to use it to, you know, square footage the best I could? Um, I could leave everything out in the rain, or I could put it indoors. I mean, that's. Here's how I see it: is you're saying that we meet the open space, but two buildings aren't allowed. So if he were to add on to his existing building, we would be okay with it? He would still have to come back through the process because it's an amended site plan of a conditional use. But it still meets everything. So yeah. if you split it into two or it's one big building, I, I'm not that tore up what, about it. What would be the difference if you wanted to build a far car garage? And he's got a big enough piece of property. Because he's limited by the number of buildings the code would allow him to build. Right. You don't he have chose to build the buildings a certain size, right. and he, uh, you're yeah. probably right. He could put an addition. Yeah. Well, we went through this with that guy off of Mission Road, was it? Or maybe north of there. He was in a very similar situation to me, I remember. Now, it was different zoning, probably. I think he had three acres like I have. And mm -hmm. he and he was off the road, and we said on a case-by-case -case basis, I think we changed something in the statutes. We would look at these type of cases. Yeah, I think since you can't really see the building that you'd be building, it's, it's kind of hidden in there. So conditional use in this case, I think, might be appropriate in this case. Which, which is a good point. Uh, I'll just counter that in saying that, you know, it's mostly buckthorn, and if, if he were to sell the property for whatever reasons in a few years and somebody comes through and cuts down all that buckthorn, then you're going to see all the buildings, right? So think about, you know, the decisions we make may not be just for this applicant, but any, any post owner of the property, right? So the, can I, the, the post owner at this point would be my daughters, they would be, they both work. But, but you understand what I'm saying, right? I, I mean. But you can't predict who, who and what. And plus, that, that's my point. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't that person also have to submit a business plan for their operation um, for what they were going to do with it? Um, they would, except that uh, a conditional use and the elements of a conditional use, unless it is agreed to previously, mm -hmm. travels with the property. So um, the fact that you are... Uh, expending energy and investing in the property to grow the business, you have the right to benefit from that and profit from that by selling the business and that associated conditional use to another user. Um, and that's the Planning Commission should keep that in mind that if, uh, if Brian were to sell the property to someone other than his daughters, um, that person has the right to continue the conditional use for, the, for this business operation. Um, and it could, it could, uh, it could be much more intense than his artisan shop. If he sells it, though, they'd have to come in with a new BPO. They'd have to come in with a new BPO. So we would still have an opportunity to say that's too intense or we don't. Yeah. Wouldn't it be the same, though, if it were attached to the existing building as a addition? I mean, you, you, it would be the same consideration. You'd have the same issues, yeah. right? Yeah. It would be one building instead of having two. Right. Yeah. So, and if he meets the open space requirements in the floor area ratio. How big of a how big of a building ancillary building can you accessory building can you have? Twelve hundred square feet. Twelve hundred square feet. Okay. Well, he's way over so what does he what does he have that not, he's he way over that with and way over. With the oh, he's way over. oh so he couldn't put an addition on. Not without coming to us for approval. Right. As a condition of his conditional use. Please.